And I really wish that that wasn't the case on this SRM rubric. What's up, everybody? I'm Aaron. This is Giddy's Tactical. Thanks for joining me on another gear review. We have here a really interesting blade that when it has appeared in the background, you guys have really been curious about, and we're going to totally unpack it today, the good and the regrettable. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on in. So what first turned me on to SRM knives is this model, which is the 9211. This I picked up for like $20 with a crossbar lock. It just has such a unique, cool design. Uh, I believe it's HCR 13 MOV steel. You know, for, for that amount of money, it was just a really cool, just kind of like off the wall purchase. And it's been fun to have in the rotation. There were definitely some drawbacks to the design. You can go check out my previous review on that, but that's a fun little $20 item that's kind of out of the blue, gives you a crossbar and, you know, and, and that type of thing. Well, because of that video, SRM reached out to me and said, hey, we got a design we want to toss your way. I said, sure, send it over. Let's see what happens. And I have now used this rubric, and I guess there's two different models or something. This is the larger version at 3.6 is what they say, blade length. And that's what all the specs say on every single sheet. But when I actually get out there and put my measuring tape on there, we're looking more at like 3.3, 3.4 on the blade length. So I, I don't know what the deal is because the small version is like 2.75 and it ain't that either. So I, I don't know where they're measuring that or if it's just the translation because this is, even though this company has been around since 1998, is mean China. Now, the uniqueness, I think, is why you guys were like, whoa, what the heck is that? You know, this is micarta over here we have a crossbar lock and we have like a, a snub nose as you can get this is like i don't know a 30 special 44 magnum b17 bomber profile blade that you don't see a lot and it is definitely striking it is a striking design with a high flat grind it goes all the way up to the fuller there that cut in which is super cool on either side you can get different colored blades, uh, stone wash, or this kind of like smoke wash, which is nice. Huge amount of belly, elongated cutting edge, and then a, a very blunt tip. It's not going to be a piercer. This is not a piercing blade. It is just kind of a broad blade that you're going to have a little bit of trouble. I mean, you can do it, but like piercing packaging of your kid's Amazon toy that just arrived, it's going to be a little tough and tricky. Now, it's on an eighth of an inch thick blade. 0 0.12 and taper slowly to the tip. So you got pretty good robustness there on 10 CR 15 MOV steel, which apparently is chemically more, but excuse me, molecularly, the molecules are the same as VG 10. So this is Chinese VG 10 basically is what you're going to get with this blade. So a little bit different than your, you know, standard D2 with some of the variants we're going to look at here momentarily, competitive options, food for thought type of stuff. Uh, it's so interesting, you know, more stainless, good edge retention, Rockwell 58 to 60. So you're going to get probably very similar to like uh, generic 154CM, generic VG10, uh, you know, 440C arguably when properly heat treated. You're going to get very similar performance. So it will outperform definitely like 8CR and OS 8 and edge retention. A little bit more difficult to get an edge back on just because of its molecular structure, but nothing at all. I mean, you know, compared to like an M390, it's going to be way easier. Uh, so it did okay, you know, in its standard performance task, nothing to write home about, but nothing, you know, terrible either outside of just the very blunt tip, but you know that from the profile. So the blade itself did exactly what it should and looks good doing it is a unique design. But guys, before we go any further in this video, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, which is Health Code Complete Meal Shakes. Now, guys, I've been telling you about Health Code here for months now because I've seen the results week after week, month after month now in my own life and with my family, with my wife. Using these complete meal shakes is an awesome option and they're going to be a lot healthier and give you a lot more nutrients and things that your body needs, particularly when you're exerting yourself. And what's awesome about these is that you're not only going to be getting non-GMO, uh, gluten-free, no soy, no added sugars, no added sweeteners, no artificial ingredients. It's keto-friendly. And with the 27 grams of 
protein and the 27 grams of healthy fats and 400 calories. It's going to give you a lot more than just trying to survive and sustain yourself on a bunch of energy bars on the trail. Guys, we are going to have a promo code for 15% off your purchase with Eat with GT. So I invite you guys, go check out that hyperlink. Use that promo code. Not only lets them know that we sent you, but it'll give you a good deal on some amazing meal replacement shakes that really keep you going. And so with that, folks, let's go ahead and get back to it. Now we come into the pivot portion. Now this is a crossbar lock. Everyone and their mom is now doing it. This one has like a disc platform be behind it there. And that's kind of interesting. Keeps it more in track than this previous model, which I guess it has it, but it just wobbled a lot, which I mean, for $20, it wasn't a big deal to me. This doesn't seem to wobble quite as much. So it seems a little bit more standard, secure, good, you know, stop bar right there, pull back, open, close. Now what's nice is that unlike the cheap version, which had Teflon washers in there, this does have um, bronze caged ball bearings. So that is a huge upgrade. And you can tell you open it up, you know, and it definitely is nice and smooth, nice and floaty. You definitely have some rock side to side. And I do feel just a slight movement up and down, not the end of the world, but you definitely, you know, it's not as tight as some other crossbars potentially that are out there, but didn't, you know, give me any undo like, whoa, what's going on here with the pivot portion. Now, as we move on to the handles, you have steel liners in there that are milled. You can see some milling in there. So that is well done. Comes in at like three and point maybe six ounces, three point nine ounces. I can't remember under four ounces for the weight. My car to handle scales that have this nice little groove traction point that kind of matches along with the cut in on the blade. Pretty blocky, but the edges at least are milled and the scales are recessed in there. So you're getting getting rigidness and durability, but it's not sharp on any of those. A little cut in there to lock you into place. Little hit of jimping. Now, this is where the first issue really comes into play for me. I tightened down. There's only two pivot points right here on the scale and then the, the pivot itself to, like, keep the scale on. I Same issue that appeared on the $20 one. Again, for $20, I was happy with it. This one, we'll talk about pricing and competitive options momentarily. You, I've got some movement on these micarta handle scales. I can feel them shifting. There's a little creaking noise, like, when you like grip it, depending on your, you know, your tension that you're putting on and how, and I can't seem to make it go away. I've tightened up both of these pivots and they were both kind of loose. This one was a little loose. I tightened that up and I tightened both sides here and it's, and it is better. It was really bad when I got it, but it, I'm still particularly right up here. I can just feel motion. Like the tolerances around the scales or something aren't quite good enough. So you're going to feel this like creaking motion and movement. I don't like it. I don't like that. I really wish that was not the case because ergonomically it feels good and it fills out my hand. doesn't feel like too blocky. It's good for an EDC knife, decent thickness there, nothing to complain about. But when you start feeling that and you start squeezing the knife and gripping it, you feel this creaking noise and, and you feel the scale shifting. It just doesn't speak to quality that you would want. And now having had two knives from them that do that, them probably i mean i don't know but my experience is that you might see that in a lot of their models i don't know so that's phase one that i did not like spacer in the back there you have ambidextrous like hidden pocket clip this pocket clip look at this fly me to the moon i mean it's like big ben's like i don't know pendulum this thing has way too much flex on it way too much flex it shifts like all over the place so you feel that also when you're like gripping the tool you can feel it moving around if they had just not split this it probably would have been fine the density is just not there uh the idea is it works fine but in comparison that i want to run in here here is the heist from kershaw with their duralock series made in china um d2 steel but this is this is not going anywhere. I mean, I cannot barely make that thing move. It is super structured and way more structured than that pocket clip. So those two things, what ends up happening is every time you grip the knife, you have all these moving things in your hand, and it feels very um, unreliable. It doesn't feel like it's structured and that there's just like a lot of like floating around. Now the tip is buried deep in there, um, and 
for the going rate of about $60 on average is what this is going for. Material wise, uh, if it didn't have all this structural moving stuff, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, the materials are there. It's got a unique design, you know, and got some upgraded parts over the older model that is more inexpensive. But I mean, even this one, you know, like it doesn't move this pocket clip from them way better designed than this model. Not digging that. And when I can pick up for like $55, this model that doesn't have any of those issues seems to be a little smoother too with the action. Better designed pocket clip, again, still ambidextrous. Um, the, it, it's the style I know is making waves and I'm sure is going to bring a lot of interest to people. But when it actually comes down to function, I just don't see the functionality or the enjoyment in my pocket or in carrying this particular rubric from SRM Knives. So I will have links, guys, in the description below this video to not only the heist, to SRM in general, where you can maybe look at some of the other models and maybe you know determine for yourself. Um, but for me personally, it, it's not something I carry. It's not something that I would uh, jump on. That's me. That's my mileage. Your mileage may vary. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts, particularly if you own other SRM pocket knives, how they've been performing for you. If you've ever used 10CR15 MOV steel, let me know your thoughts on that as well. And for those of you who own a heist, throw down and leave a comment below. Always appreciate your guys' feedback and comments. Check out the other video popping up. Until next time, guys, always remember to stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.